and that is our uh, diagram and today we are going to continue with our teaching on interpretation interpretation talks about rightly dividing the word of truth we are reading second timothy chapter 2 verse 15 i'm going to read it in two translation first king james study to show yourself approved unto god a workman that needed not be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth new american standard bible be diligent to present yourself approved to god as a workman who does not need to be ashamed accurately handling the word of truth accurately handling the word of truth now this is our foundation as we move into this very very important area of interpretation remember what i said a couple of teaching ago you can say that this is actually the second part of this whole teaching because now we are looking at the practicality of us now that we have this book in our hand it has gone through this process now we have it it has been interpreted it has been transmitted we have it in our language now how can we profit how can this word actually fulfill its purpose in our life and that is where we are at the moment and that is where we're talking about interpretation now i've read from two translations because i want us to understand what we are saying now i'm going to look into that verse a little bit in depth it says study to show yourself approved now the word study there is not just you studying a book now it involves that uh, but that word the the impact the heart of that word is diligence hasting make is exact yourself give diligence now it is study in that sense but we are saying here that for you listen for you to get what god has given you you need to put in effort you need to put in diligence it's not just a matter of you just folding your hands and expecting that things will just happen you know prayer is good unfortunately most people just want somebody to pray for them or want somebody to fast for them and just get no those prayer is very very fundamental it's very very important but the word we have to put diligence that word means to make effort to be prompt to be honest okay for us to get the best out of the scripture there are efforts there are things just like when you study when you want to study there are efforts you put into it you don't just you know go and sit down where there is crowd where people are distracting you and then you want to study for your exam i mean if you have an exam and you are going for an important exam do you go don't you don't you make effort you will find a very quiet place or you will go to the library to study not only that you will get all the textbooks that you know are relevant to this exam you are going to do or the courses course you are taking or maybe Maybe you want to write a project you get all the all the papers that have been written journal papers that are you gather them together and you sit down you set time apart quality time and you sit down and you read and you compare and you read and you compare and you write and you 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 there are some things that that you don't understand and you check again and you check again and maybe you still don't understand and you you want to talk to somebody who understand there is that diligence that goes into it and this is the difference between a a, a good student and if I can call it a bad student or a successful student or a failing student because the good student put in the effort to study so when the Bible says study to show yourself that was study imply that diligence okay I will read it again okay he said to use speed that is to make effort to be prompt to be honest to be diligent it talks about endeavoring laboring in the place of study if you want to receive the revelation of the truth if you want to receive the revelation that is housed for us in this scripture there is an effort that is involved you will need to spend money okay to buy good quality bibles and sometimes some of those things like i said and i'm going to show us by the grace of god sometimes some of those things are actually free now if you have a phone okay but you will need to take effort to know what are the app okay download them and also take effort to read them not just read them study them not just study them compare them take time to read them you know just like you set up time and make effort is the same thing so when the bible says study 
there's an effort that goes into it. Then study to show yourself approved. Approved. And I want to talk about that word approved. You see, you see, the thing is this. Let's say somebody, you got, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe they gave you a contract to do something or supply something or build something. Okay, there is a standard. There is an approved standard that you are expected to build to. Okay, when you are given a work to do, there is a standard that must be met. It's not a matter of, yes, I've studied my Bible today. Yes, let's go, I've prayed today. No, 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 no. There is, there is, a, there is a standard you must achieve there is a standard there's a way we study there's a way we read the bible there's a way we study the bible and meditate the bible that bring us into a place of receiving what we need to receive it's not just doing some shoddy thing and said i've read my bible today the bible says that there's a way you study that bring you into a place of approval that word approved means accepted pleasing that which is approved okay there is a way to study the scripture and that is what we are going to be looking at as we look at how do i study the scripture there's a way to do it okay that you may be approved study to show yourself approved study to show yourself approved but this approval is not unto me <laughs> no, I'm not studying the Bible so that if the pastor asks me today, have you studied your Bible? Yes, I study my Bible. Get off my back. No, 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 no. The approve it is God that gave the approval. Yes, the Holy Spirit wants to give us revelation, but there is a position that we have to take. There is an attitude of our body, excuse me, and an attitude of our heart that bring us into a place of receiving. You remember, I'm very sure I've alluded to this story, talking about Mary and Martha. Okay, there was a position that Mary took and the Lord Jesus said that Mary has found it. One thing that is necessary, the Bible says that Mary sat at the feet of Jesus to hear his voice. Okay, she she took her attention away from everything else and focused that attention on the Lord Jesus Christ so that she can receive. And that is why she was the woman that had the revelation of the death and burial of our Lord Jesus Christ. He, he anointed him before, before his death. So study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman, a workman. We as Christians, we are workmen, we are workwomen. Okay, we are not just, you know, floating around, gyrating around. He's a laborer, workman, workwoman, laborers, usually one who works for hire, especially an agricultural, you know, worker. Is one who does a worker. It's a work. Okay, it's a labor. When you study the scripture, you spend time, you spend effort. Yes, the Holy Spirit will illuminate you, but it's as you also spend time with him. The Bible says that the Lord Jesus chose 12 apostles to be with him. It's not that we want to earn God's grace. No, it's that we have to put ourselves in a position for God to be able to do what he wants to do, to be able to reveal the truth to us. I mean, Paul told us that when it pleased God to reveal his son in me. He took him aside. He went aside and spent time, quality time, and God spending time in God's presence. We need to understand this. We have to be prepared in the place of study, in the place of prayer, fasting, studying, to receive what God has already given. A workman, a workwoman that needed not be ashamed, having no cause to be ashamed. The truth is this. Every scripture is given by the inspiration of God for correction, for instruction, for rebuke, for righteousness, for teaching, for doctrine, that the man and the woman of God may be equipped, thoroughly furnished. You see, it's as we study the word, as we put effort, we are being equipped, we are being furnished, we are being ready to do good works, to live the righteous life, to live the life that God has asked us to live. As we study, we are being transformed into the image of Christ from one level of glory to another, and we are thoroughly furnished unto all good works. I will read it again. Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needed not be ashamed, now rightly dividing the word of truth but we have to know how do i rightly divide the word of truth and this is what interpretation is all about rightly dividing that word in hip in, in greek means to cut straight in other words to handle aright to teach truth directly and correctly 
when we study, we'll be able to rightly divide the word of truth, to make straight and smooth, to handle a right, to teach the truth directly and correctly, to rightly divide. So Paul had in mind the important principle that we must correctly handle the word of God, number one, in his analysis, and number two, in his presentation. The main emphasis is on the study and the interpretation of the word of God. There is a method of biblical interpretation. Study to show yourself approved. There is a way to code. If you want to be a fashion designer, you go to the school of fashion designing so that they can teach you. There is a method. And it's the same as a workman and workwoman that is handling the word of God. There is a way to approach the word of God. There is a way to study it. And that is what hermeneutics is about. It is the science that teaches the principles, the laws, and the method of interpretation. In reference to scripture, hermeneutics seems to answer two basic questions. What does the Bible say? And what does the Bible mean? So as we approach the Bible, anywhere that you are reading, we have to ask ourselves, what is the Bible saying here? And what does it mean? A couple of things to explain to you. Exegesis is the right way to approach the scripture. Is when you go into the scripture and allow the scripture to tell you the meaning thereof. You want the meaning to come out of the pages of the Bible. You are studying. You are comparing scripture with scripture and the Holy Spirit is shining on that scripture. Okay, and that is exegesis. The scripture, the Holy Spirit is beaming out the meaning of the scripture to you. The meaning is coming off the pages of the scripture, obviously, by the Holy Spirit. Okay, and that is exegesis. Now, there is something that is common which we must not do, and that is exegesis. Exegesis, that is when people read meaning into the Bible. Unfortunately, there is a lot of that going on today. When people want to justify their sinful life, they read meaning into the Bible. They don't allow the Holy Spirit to reveal the truth from the Scripture to them. They make the Scripture say what they want. They know where they are going. They want to justify their sinful life. They want to justify their wickedness. You know, even thieves will, will find something in this Bible to justify their thieves. I mean, we have people that call themselves Christians. And they are, they are politicians. They are in place of authority. And they, 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 are, they, are, they are corrupt. They, they, they are living a life that is not Christ. But they will try to use the scripture. Wicked husband, wicked wife will use the scripture. Husband will say the Bible says. Why we say the Bible says? We are people because of our dishonesty. We are all the time, and we all have to be very careful. So when you study the scripture, you must study the scripture with humility. You know, go into the scripture to say, Father, like the like the like the the psalmist said, search my heart. Reveal myself to myself. It is we coming humbly and allowing God to search our heart. You know, the word of God, two edges of searching the inward part of the belly. Not we want making the word of God say what we want him to say. You know, the Bible says that in the end time, people will not be able to endure the truth. They will gather them for themselves, teachers that will tell them what they want to hear. Okay, where the word of God will be more, more or less psychology. Okay, positive thinking. Okay, just just let's 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 inspire you know the people. I mean, there's nothing wrong in inspiration, but the thing is that we have to go into the scripture and let the scripture speak to us. And when the scripture speak to us, it will correct us, it will rebuke us, it will teach us, it will equip us. Exegesis, exegesis. Exegesis is where all the wrong doctrine came out from. All the wrong doctrines. So we as Christians, we need to learn the basis of sound doctrine. We need to learn the basis of sound Bible study. Sound Bible study is that which is based on the fundamental principle of interpretation that will protect the student from scriptural abuse and that will provide a check on his or her own wild imagination. And you know, we did spend a lot of time talking about doctrine in earlier teaching that we'll have. Okay, 
exegesis e x exegesis is what we want okay we want god to speak to us okay we want god to train us we want god to correct us obviously god is going to do that using his men and women using our pastors our teachers our evangelists okay and who if your if your father likes you they will correct you obviously they will they will if, if you do something they will encourage you okay they will they will give you good feedbacks and if there's a need for for things to be changed they will also give you feedback where things need to be better but we live in a world now where people don't want to be corrected myself included but we have to consciously put ourselves in a place i mean if you go to a church where all they are telling you is that you are good it's okay that's not that they are not helping you Okay, every father will correct their children so that they may grow up to become good children, so that they will learn virtue, they will learn character. Okay, all of us need correction. Look, there are things because we because of the life that we have lived, we, there are things in our life that we need to change. The word of God, because we have been sinners. The Bible says in the Word of God, the Bible tells us that we should not be conformed to this world, but we'll be transformed by the renewing of our mind. There are new ideals, there are new constitutions, there are new things in the world, in the kingdom of God. Remember what we said about truth, God, Jesus, and the kingdom. Listen, when I came first to UK, there are so many things that were strange in here. I am in the country, but there are so many habits there's, there are different lifestyles from the, the culture I came from. But there are different lifestyles here that I need. There are some things I need to unlearn. For example, for a good example, we drive here on a different side of the road than we were doing in Nigeria. I was driving in Nigeria. In Nigeria, we drive on the right side of the road. Here, you drive on the rest left side on the road and the, 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 the side that you are sitting in in your car is different right hand drive left hand drive so you drive and you have to you have to relearn in fact it took time to get used to that i mean i remember there was a day i was driving i was going to drive on different side of the road because that was what i was used to but the way for us to understand our new lifestyle is by the word and not only that as we study the world we are being empowered we are being transformed we are being changed into christ in all things and then we can live a life of righteousness holiness godliness Okay, and also that sometimes honestly we do things that we don't know is wrong, but as we read the scripture, the Holy Spirit reveals that to us, oh God, forgive me by the word. Okay, and we grow by the word. Hallelujah. So I'm going to stop here today, but next time, by the grace of God, we are going to go and look into some method. Remember, the, rightly dividing, there are methods. Okay, remember the example we said when you want to train to be a fashion designer, you have to go and learn how to do it. Okay, I mean, nowadays also there's a lot you can learn by just going on the internet, going to YouTube, but you have to learn. You have to find somebody who knows what they are doing and learn from them and learn from them. Okay, you know, I, I do a little bit of singing. I'm, I'm, I'm just an amateur. I have a nephew who, who is a professional in this day. I learn from him. Okay, it taught me a number of things. It showed me these are the things on cool, these are the things you need to buy, these are the things you, it taught, taught me. I mean, he was not trying to make me a professional, but it taught me enough for me to be able to do a few things for myself. I went to YouTube, also learn from some channel that talks about some of these things. And, and as I'm learning, I'm growing, I'm being equipped. I have the tools to be able to do a couple of things. There are some things I know I cannot do. I don't have that, that uh, I don't have the, the, the know-how, the technical know-how to do that. But there are some things I can do. And I can say, you know, I don't know how to do that, but I want to learn how to do that. Then I, I talk to, to my, my nephew, Dio, or, or I talk, or I go to some place, I, say, I want to learn how to do that. And then you learn how to do it. And, and even when you learn how to do things, you don't do it right the first time. You have to do it a couple of times. And that's training. The Bible says that strong meat belongs to those who, by reason of use, by reason of his use, have their senses exercised. Training. Taking the word of God. The Bible says the word of God is like a mirror. You are looking and you are making correction. Oh, the Bible says that those people that do the word, be you do out of the word and not just hear you are, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are studying it. The Lord Jesus said, as I see my father do, that's what I do. You are studying, you are seeing Jesus, the Holy Spirit is empowering you. You are going out and doing it and doing it and doing it. Praise the Lord. So next time, by the grace of God, we are going to go into the next stage of looking at what are the some methods, 
I mean, I don't know everything. I'm learning myself. And maybe you, you know your own method, but we're going to look at some, some, some universal method, some universal approach, some found, foundation we can lay, some principles of, of approach to the scripture, to study the scripture so that we can study, be diligent to show yourself approved unto God. A work, a laborer, a workman, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You know, one truth is that this world is going to come to an end. And that your life now determines where you are going to spend eternity. Okay, all of us have seen, we have turned our back against the Creator, but the only way out is Jesus. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. That is the way out. Receive Him. It's not about religion. No religion will save you. You cannot be good enough to be saved. And that is why God Himself has given you the way of salvation. Is Jesus. Accept Him into your life. And then He will become your Lord. And then He will begin to show you the way to grow like we've been talking about. And you will, be, you, you, you will take away the heart of stone and give you the heart of, of flesh. And then you begin to grow as a child grows, becoming more like Jesus, living a life that, that pleases God. Hallelujah. Don't leave it until tomorrow. I know you may say, but what will my father say? What will my mother say? What will my wife say? Listen to me. In eternity, they will not be there. Maybe, and maybe you may suffer maybe rejection if you become a Christian, but... It, it is what that experience because it's about life and death. It's about where you are going to live your life eternally. You don't want to go to hell just because of what people will say. Okay, you want to pray for them. But the truth is that this is a decision that you have to make with God. And then you can then pray for your father. You can pray for your mother. You can pray for your husband and wife so that they also can see the light.